Hi, my name's Tom Cosford. I've been asked to do a short video by opening up on my season during the 2021 summer. So a little bit about me. I play for Oxfordshire in the National Counties Cricket Association, I think is the official term. Okay, it's a newly structured way for the minor counties to play their cricket. I play my club cricket for Oxford Downs Cricket Club in the home counties division two which is and the club is based in a village called stanlake in oxfordshire okay i am a school te primary school teacher by trait during the week so it's quite a juggling act during term time to juggle the sort of stresses of work and then playing cricket to a fairly high standard at the weekend so a brief overview of the sort of ncca program itself it was reconfigured at the start of the 2020 summer and obviously covid completely wiped that out but the way that it works is that the national counties the once minor counties come together to play across three formats so we have a 2020 season where we will play two t20s during a sunday and this has now been regionalized to avoid sort of large lengthy travels so Oxfordshire will play Bedfordshire, Hertfordshire, Wales, Buckinghamshire and Berkshire in their T20s. And once we sort of get through our T20 campaign, we move straight on thick and fast to the 50-50 campaign, our 50 over competition. And this is played on a Sunday again. And again, it's regionalised. I think Oxfordshire had fixtures this year against Bedfordshire. Buckinghamshire, Wales and Berkshire and the winner of that particular mini group will then go through to the regional sort of like divisional knockout stages where they'll play the rest of the national counties from across the country okay, and obviously the, these being played on Sundays over sort of um, the sort of May, June, July time means that playing cricket on a Saturday and then playing a cricket on a Sunday is quite a stressful time, especially with work during the weeks. So it takes a lot to sort of get through your working week and then to play on a Saturday and play hard on a Saturday, as, as some games can be, to then think about what you then you have to play on a Sunday, potentially you might have to travel somewhere. If it's an away game, it might be just over an hour away and then play a full hard days of white ball cricket to then travel back home with a few hours downtime before, oh, got to go to bed and back to work the next day. So it can, over time, be quite sort of build up a lot of sort of like tiredness and sort of, I suppose, fatigue mentally, which can be quite difficult to um, to maintain throughout the season. Um, so sort of building on that. So Oxfordshire, sorry, finally, we sort of get to our three day championship, which is the sort of the end of the summer. This is where we are split into an east and west divisional setup. So you'll have... Western Division 1 and Western Division 2, Eastern Division 1 and Eastern Division 2. Oxfordshire sit at the moment, or well, at the start of the summer, we sat in Division 1 West, which involves Cheshire, Berkshire, Wiltshire and ourselves. So we ended up winning, oh and Dorset, I do apologise, Dorset. So we ended up losing only one game and winning three, which meant we topped Division 1 West and we managed to beat Berkshire, who hadn't been beaten in something like seven years. It was quite a ridiculous run for them. And we managed to string a good performance together to beat them, which was a real sort of high point of the season. We then made it to... you. Then once you kind of top your division, so Division 1 winners of the east were suffolk so we played suffolk in the grand final held at tring park cc over four days whereas the normal games are over three days a sunday monday tuesday we played over four days in early september and we came out as victors in that four day game which meant we were crowned national champions of the ncca three-day championship which oxford had not done for a very long time so oxford will now stay in division one next year Herefordshire will enter our division so it's kind of there is a rolling sort of promotion from division two so that's kind of a rundown of the NCCA program and how they've managed to restructure the what once was the minor county cricket association to make the traveling a little bit less for the white ball game but then still keep sort of the um sort of the prestige for the three-day championship and obviously the away trips which can be quite fun so luckily for me, personally, um, the three-day championship games happen over my school summer holidays, which, meant, which means I have a lot of downtime between games. 
but I can imagine other people who have to then play on a Saturday, travel to wherever you have to travel to to play your national county fixture over a Sunday, Monday and Tuesday to then go back to work on a Wednesday can put a fair few stresses on the mind. So it's you have to find ways to sort of de-stress, to sort of unwind yourself throughout the week or find ways of chilling out during the game. If that's listening to podcasts, some guys read papers, we do crosswords. Playing that game of football in the morning is quite important as well. So it's it's all big and opening up sort of like some of their strategies on their website and through just general chit chat with some with some of the um the other players helps kind of sort of de stress your mind, unwind and sort of keep you going. So over the course of the season, Oxford had obviously had a really good season and for me personally it was quite a good season as well. So we came runner up in the fifty fifty, the fifty over group stage we sort of lost a few tight games we lost two tight games unfortunately which could have gone either way down sort of the last few overs and that unfortunately meant that we came second to Berkshire and Berkshire actually ended up going on to win the whole competition so it wasn't such as it wasn't sort of so bad in the end really but it was a really promising sort of time for us as we are starting to develop our white ball sort of cricket and start to figure out quite a good format for ourselves with the players that we've got coming through and hopefully some of our sort of Sussex players next year will be more available more and we can use those to great effect. And obviously, as I've mentioned, we were three day white, uh, Red Bull champions, which was a massive sort of accolade for the county to get and was really sort of amazing to be a part of that sort of fixture and that sort of run, which obviously was the icing on the cake for quite a long, hard summer. Obviously, the summer after COVID, people really wanted to get into it. But that obviously meant cramming in lots of games of cricket, lots of days of cricket. And probably by the end, sort of to be quite honest about it, I was pretty done with cricket and needed a bit of a break and wanted my Saturdays back. Um, so, yeah, so that was that sort of an overrun um, over the course of the season. Personally, had quite a good run. I ended up being leading run scorer across all the formats, if you count sort of all the games and a few of the warm ups. And I was up there with the. Um, some of the run scorers in high, highest run scorers in Division One over the course of the four games of the three day championship. Um, so with that sort of looking then to kick on next year, as now I've got sort of better strategies of how to deal with sort of playing those two two two, yeah, two games in a weekend, and hopefully next <laughs> next summer there won't be COVID in schools. So the stresses that we that I felt personally through teaching in a primary school over the pandemic obviously won't be there and it will be a little bit more relaxing throughout the week in the evenings with less workload, less figuring out online teaching to then go into the weekend with a bit of a fresher mind and sort of a better attitude during term time, especially and not just waiting for that holiday to be able to sort of, sort of unwind and sort of clear my head. Um, so that sort of moves nicely on to sort of the next point that I've been asked to talk about, which... Um, Obviously, it's all quite mentally hard um, during the season with work sort of consuming a lot of time. And I'm sure I'm not the only one that feels that throughout the week sometimes. But lots of people have to travel. Personally, being a primary school teacher, is that means the days are quite long. And I do quite a bit of travelling to and from my place of work to where I live. So sometimes that helps with the unwinding through at the end of the day. But it does mean I'm spending 40 minutes in a car stuck in traffic on the A40 getting from Oxford to Whitney. Um, so if you have a particularly sort of tricky week, it then becomes quite difficult to um, to then get in the right headspace for a Saturday-Sunday set of games, which mean then can be that you're letting sort of your midweek life get on top of you and then funneling into cricket. Um, and it can be draining sometimes. Other, on the other sort of the flip side, cricket can, and most of the time, is the sort of the de-stressing tool which is great. And obviously with opening up and their work they're doing, they're kind of bringing forward that forefront that if people are starting to feel stressed and anxious and the sort of their mental health is taking effect, that cricket can be the way forward to sort of, to talk one, have a safe space to talk about it, which is fantastic and what we need to do at the moment in order to sort of face this horrible stigma that's been going around um, with suicide. And obviously that is, cricket is a way to do that on the weekend. So what it's helped me do is obviously supporting opening up more this season is getting me to realise that I've got to use cricket as my, well not got to, I'm using cricket as my way of de-stressing, of sort of talking about 
things. And if things are bothering me, I make sure I talk about them with people. I've got my support group around me. But making sure I go into the cricket on a Saturday, knowing that that is my way to sort of unwind, de-stress, to not think about the week and just to have a nice time away from sort of like the pressures of the working week. And so obviously with opening up doing their fantastic work, it's made me more aware that I need to do that personally and I need to think about that. And if I'm, I'm feeling down or things are getting to me, I need to find someone, a mate or my, my partner or someone to talk to before that and then use cricket as the way just to feel better about myself because it is a sport I love to do and I'm, I'm good at it. OK, that obviously that helps as well. And obviously some people really enjoy their cricket and that is how they release and unwind at the end of a of a long, hard week. And I think what the work that opening up are doing is fantastic and getting that message across that, it, again, it, as their hashtag says, it's not weak to speak. You need to speak to people about it and you can use cricket as that way of unwinding, um, which is fantastic, which obviously um, takes me into sort of why I support sort of opening up. Um, so 17 years ago, my father took his own life. Um, it was very hard for me at that point. I was 12, okay, just at school, starting out in my secondary school. Um, yeah, and it, it, it hit hard. And obviously there's been there's been issues that have followed that through. So obviously it's at the forefront of my mind that suicide is, is something that needs to be t spoken about and needs to be addressed, especially in the male uh, population, where obviously the, the numbers keep getting ridiculously high and there's this whole stigma of you've got to man up, you've got to don't share your problems, don't air your dirty laundry. But obviously the work that opening up are doing is fantastic in promoting that you've got you've ju we've just got to start talking about it. Any, anything, even if it's the littlest thing, go and find someone to talk to. There's always going to be someone at a cricket club, <laughs> which is the which is a why it's a brilliant place that will just sit and listen to you. They'll, you can talk about anything from cricket and then slowly drop in sort of what's bothering you, and they'll all see they're great. Are my team personally are very good at spotting if people aren't okay and you get the sort of the message everything all right mate or you get a phone call there's a bloke on our side that will be the first to ring you if things aren't quite right and say we should just go for a beer or let's go for a chat let's go for a coffee and we sit and talk about it so i think cricket clubs are a brilliant place to foster that sort of mindset that we just need to talk about it to get it off our chest to get it out of our mind and talking about it makes us feel better so then we can enjoy our cricket and not bring that into the cricket side of things necessarily but it it can then help people de-stress and unwind um so that's kind of why i support opening up obviously personally it hits it hits home with what they're trying to sort of help and prevent which is why i kind of when i noticed it started to sort of get behind it a bit more and try and promote it where i can and i think through these kind of videos and podcasts and people talking about it more that's going to gain momentum and hopefully we can start to make a small difference um with this work so thanks for sort of listening to my drivel um i hope this is kind of helpful given an insight into sort of playing national county cricket while juggling primary school teaching and juggling every other cricket and sort of seeing how i use cricket and opening up to sort of help me sort of get through and keep sort of a clear head and make sure I talk about things when they bother me and not let them get too far. So thanks for listening, guys. Hope you have a great winter.